Welcome to Chamber Chats, a weekly series by the West Monroe, West Washita Chamber of Commerce, highlighting our valued members. As always, find out more about the Chamber and our members online at westmonroechamber.org. Special thanks to our Season 2 title sponsor, Washita Valley Federal Credit Union. And now, this week's episode of Chamber Chats. Hello everyone, welcome to today's episode of Chamber Chats, filmed right here at Louisiana Delta Community College. Today I have with us Dr. Sean Sanson, who owns Family Sanson Medicine, and also um, a newly elected... Corner elect, yes. Yes, corner elect. So, Dr. Sanson, how did you get into family medicine? Let's start with that. Well, I was in medical school, and everybody kind of has to make a decision somewhere during medical school what they want to do, what they want to specialize in. And for the longest time, you know, I went into medical school, I thought I was going to do psychiatry. Mm -hmm. I thought that's what I wanted to do. My undergraduate was in psychology, but then, uh, this may be bad to say, but uh, uh, the more I worked with a psychiatrist at the medical school, mm -hmm. I realized I could not spend four years with those people. Oh, wow. They were weird. You know, so <laughs> Don't trust I, I couldn't do it. <laughs> Let's hope they're not watching. Um, okay, and then, you know, you, I guess you graduated, decide to, you know, set up your own practice. Correct. Which is a family-owned Well, company. I actually started at, first of all, I started in pharma for three years. Okay. Um, uh, went there and was an employee physician at Union General Hospital for three years, and then uh, I got a call uh, from Dr. Mark Dollar in mm -hmm. 2008. Uh, he was looking for another partner uh, to move into his office on Professional Drive, mm -hmm. right down from y'all's office. Yes, sir. And um, uh, so I decided to come back home you know, mm -hmm. from West Monroe and moved in with him and uh, stayed there on Professional Drive. I think we were there for two years and then decided to open up my own place that was open seven days a week. and. You know, wow. Wanted to just be independent and be my own boss. And how long have, have you been on your own? I was since, uh, completely by myself there since April of 2010. Wow, so over 10 years, over a yeah. decade. And what br what brings you joy the most? Uh, I guess the best thing is seeing patients, you know, mm -hmm. interacting with patients, talking with the patients. Mm -hmm. um, Building relationships I, with those patients. Know, I love that part of medicine, but... Uh, 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 I don't know if you'll hear from other doctors, but as you know, medicine is changing mm -hmm. rapidly yes, sir. every single day. Uh, uh, requirements, you know, paperwork requirements and stuff uh, uh, that insurance companies need has gone way up. And I now spend, you know, family practice, and this is across the board for most family practice doctors, you know, at least half your day, if not more. For me, it's probably 60 to 7% on paperwork now <laughs> instead of in front of a patient. And so it's, uh, it's, it's a grind. And so, you know, uh, I love the patients, and I, I, I wish I could stay with them forever, but uh, uh, that paperwork just eats at you. I know, eats I know. At you. Well, I love when I'm, you know, speaking with someone for a while, I was, you know, um, kind of looking to see new doctors and stuff, but in passing, you have these conversations with not only chamber members, but members of the community, and, you know, I ask, like, where do you go who's your primary care doctor? And uh, let me tell you, 75% of the time, they would say Dr. Sanson or, you know, Jody. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, see. goodness. Uh, <laughs> there, there was a time that there in the clinic, we were seeing over 300 people a day. It was, we were, we were busy for a while. Yeah. That's insane. That is a, a lot of people in one day. Mm -hmm. So, but I can't imagine doing paperwork on 300 people. Well, that's back <laughs> when the requirements were not as bad. And also we did not have to be on computer. That's back with paper charts. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, computerized charting has completely changed the game and has really, it's, it's probably cut in half how many people you can see a day per provider. Wow. It's, uh, it has been a humongous game changer in medicine. I can imagine, I can imagine. That has really hurt. That's why you see so many uh, physicians now are employed mm -hmm. uh, by hospitals and medical groups. I'm one of the few that's still uh, independent. Wow. So let's dive into, um, you know, corner. I want to talk about that. Sure. What are some, how, how why did you pursue being? Well, what we just talked about, I was, you know, you know, uh, the paperwork and everything and medicine was just starting to kind of eat at me and get a little burnt out with that paperwork and all mm -hmm. that. And so I've been looking at other things and, you know, I had, I know all the politicians in town. So uh, several of them were at my office before this last election or before mm -hmm. you signed up and uh, I can remember one of them was in my office talking about things and we were just looking at what all was coming up uh, in that election and coroner was one of them 
And he just said, hey, you ought to run for coroner. Yes. And I'm like, well, I haven't thought about that, but, you know, my dad's run for many offices. Uh, you know, he ran for district judge mm -hmm. many times, uh, never won, but uh, he ran. <laughs> he ran. <laughs> uh, uh, and so he loves it. And I kind of like politics and that sort of thing a little bit. Yeah. And so I called some other friends of mine in law enforcement and stuff and uh, was encouraged to run. Mm -hmm. They all said do it. That's awesome. And so uh, I threw my hat in and uh, I started talking to everybody about the coroner's office, you know, what things could be improved, you know, what needs to be changed, that mm -hmm. sort of thing, and, uh, uh, and then won. And um, now I'm in the process of trying to get my team together to take office in March, on March 25th. Yes, and I will be there. Um, what challenges do you anticipate facing in your new role? Uh, the biggest one, I guess, will be, uh, you know, like with any business, when a new boss comes in, uh, the change. change. And mm -hmm. whether change is good or bad, it scares people. Yes, sir. And so, um, you know, just getting all the employees, you know, you know, with you mm -hmm. and getting them to agree with you on how things should run and your vision. And, uh, uh, you know, one of the big things that I ran on and one of the things I'm going to try to do and, and, and probably what would take care of 90% of the complaints I've ever heard about the coroner's office is if we could just get, you know, death certificates signed mm -hmm. within a week. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, sometimes they're getting a little longer than that. But, you know, that, that holds up so much stuff in people's life. You know, their, That's right. their, their life insurance, you know, uh, secessions mm -hmm. on their wheels, all kind of stuff gets held up that's very important for these families. Yes. And so uh, those death certificates need to be signed as quickly as possible. Absolutely. No. Um, so what do you anticipate implementing, like new to you for besides that? I know that we, we've had some personal conversations about, you know, what changes um, you want to make in mm -hmm. that new mm -hmm. position. And so what else besides the death certificates being signed? Um, that, that's probably the biggest one. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm also looking at uh, where we send our autopsies, mm -hmm. and um, uh, currently autopsies are being sent out of state, mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, those autopsies are paid for with uh, Louisiana, Washtenaw Parish, actually, mm -hmm. Washtenaw Parish taxpayer money. That's right. And so I would like that money to at least stay in the state. Unfortunately, we don't have a forensic pathologist in Washtenaw Parish. Mm -hmm. Uh, the closest one is in Shreveport, mm -hmm. and I've uh, been in contact with the medical school there, and they're extremely excited about having business from here. That would be awesome. And so that's going to be probably the other biggest change that I make is start sending that there, and that's going to save uh, quite a bit of money because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, they charge a little less than what is being paid to the guys in Little Rock, plus it's going to cut the transportation cost in half. That's so great. actually, you know, transporting the dead bodies. Yes. And p piggybacking off of that, what do you think the biggest misconception is about coroners? Probably that we just do death. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, most people, when they think of the coroner, they think, oh, yeah, they pronounce people dead, mm -hmm. sign the death certificate. Uh, we actually have two other large functions, uh, and one of them is actually keeps us busier than the death side. Yeah. And that is anybody in the state of Louisiana who is committed for a psychiatric mm -hmm. uh, or mental illness into the hospital or psychiatric hospital against their will, the coroner, his or herself, has to sign off on that. Gotcha. Uh, any doctor can hold somebody in the hospital for 72 hours but once they reach that 72 hour threshold, the coroner has Sit to down. sign. Yeah. And uh, currently in Washita Parish, uh, there are around 10 to 13 people per day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, committed into the psych hospitals against their that will. Does get, that does keep you busy. Yes, yes, because I will have to see all those myself, yes. Wow, 13 a day. Yes. That's a lot. Yep. Yeah, you're gonna be a busy man. Yep, yep. And then the other thing, um, which most people have no clue at all is we're also in charge of investigations and collecting forensic evidence for all sexual assaults and rapes. Mm -hmm. uh, See, I didn't know that either. And um, uh, we have an excellent team of RNs who are mm -hmm. specially trained in that. Uh, uh, some really fine RNs uh, who go through a lot of uh, 
uh, workshops and schooling mm -hmm. uh, to learn how to take a history, you know, make these mostly ladies, mm -hmm. unfortunately, uh, feel comfortable, um, and then collect uh, the rape kit, collect evidence for uh, DNA and that sort of thing. Wow. And the Washita office actually um, oversees that program for most of the northeast part of the state. That's insane. I had no idea about that. I mean, mm -hmm. I do watch a lot of Law and & Order and, mm -hmm. you know, so my... It's my, different in different yeah, states. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so definitely have a different uh, idea yeah. of it. Well, I appreciate you so much for joining us today. I'm glad that we dived into, you know, what is to be expected when you um, become in your new role and then, you know, your experiences with Sanson Family Medical. So yeah. we appreciate having you as a chamber member and we are excited for your new, your new venture. Oh, you're welcome. So, well, thank you everyone for tuning into today's episode of Chamber Chats filmed right here at Louisiana Delta Community College. Um, stay tuned for more episodes as we highlight different board members and chamber members.